everything. So I want to go back in time, essentially, to the California gold rush. Uh, and then I want to start off by posing the question of, do you know who made the most money overall during the California gold rush out of anyone whatsoever? The simplistic answer to that, if you don't know, was Levi Strauss, the inventor of the jeans. Essentially, miners, they wore their jeans, their not jeans, <laughs> and they had uh, problems with their pants because they weren't durable enough. And then so Levi Strauss invented yeah. and patented the rivet on the jeans. Uh, so like the butt buckle mechanism, essentially, and then um, gave and sold miners jeans. And then they loved them because they were a lot more durable than what they had before. And then so Levi Strauss ended up becoming a king of that market, right? Uh, and then another example I look at within that, so I grew up in Sacramento, and then so in that, there's uh, James Sutter, like the Sutter's Ford, uh, and all of that. He's a kind of like a big figure around that area. And then uh, within that, like it's the same type of concept, right? He sold supplies to the miners. <laughs> that was how he made his money, right? That's And, and it was just all purely off of the periphery of these things. Uh, and then diving deeper into that, the secondary aspect and, and area that I look at within this is looking towards Steve Jobs. And then Steve Jobs, he said something which is essentially uh, along the lines of that uh, you don't actually know what you want as the consumer. <laughs> and then uh, I've always thought of that kind of as like a uh, like a, a boastful statement overall. But when I dive into these things and look at this, like I 1 million percent at this point understand what Steve Jobs meant by that statement. Like you don't understand <laughs> what you actually want uh, within this uh, particular gold rush that we're in right now, right? Like uh, you think that you want this, like what we're looking at here, this, this GPT 4.1 <laughs> and then uh, within this, so, the big reason, like the biggest, there's two reasons why you don't want this. Let me start there, right? Like, it's just start off off the top. Let me give you my my big arguments within this. Uh, big one and the biggest one to me is this, right? Uh, and then this average cost is the cost for it to like do like a completion, right? To complete an action. So 6.8 cents every single time that you need it to complete an action. That's expensive. And then so... Uh, a task can provide, like take up multiple actions, right? So it could be six point eight cents, six point eight cents, and then maybe it fails fifteen times within that 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 one call, etc. Right? Like so, it's like uh, you want it to do like one big task, it like it could chunk out to like three dollars or fifty cents, five dollars. I'm just pointing that out overall within that, right? Uh, and then the secondary thing, like I want to point and, and call major significant attention to is that what you'll notice here is that there's a discrepancy between these two numbers, right? Average action completion and average tool selection quality. These two things here and here, right? These are two different tasks. And then I've made a plethora of videos on this point at this point, but this is crystal clear for you, like as to mathematically uh, why these models are going to fail overall or not be the best architecture overall when it comes to these particular tasks, right? Because knowing is a separate thing than doing in the model. And then you can train up the model and it can know. You can train up that no portion, but mathematically speaking, the do portion has like uh, significant mathematical problems that cannot be overcome. Like look at all of these benchmarks here, right? And then look at these, like look at, and, and we can go down here. Uh, there's a, a one in particular, look at this, <laughs> like uh, you're scoring 94% on this side, right? But only 0.3, like 38% on the do side. Like it's so 94% on the no side, like let's, they, they, they're they like, let's quit, throw the kitchen sink at it, right? Let's max it. Uh, and then they're still able, only able to get this. Uh, and then even like, like throwing the kitchen sink at the problem again with open AI, with their latest model, this is what they're able to get like 62% and 82 and 80%, uh, which is a, a jump from, uh, from what we're looking at here, like 55 and 92. Right. <laughs> but like, um, kind of a jump, but they had to, you see their sacrifice, like there's uh, no way around the mathematics within this. Like you can see it from the numbers within this, right? And then all, I mean, all of these companies, all of these proprietary companies are trying to slice into this. Everyone realizes 
this equation and this is the pro and this is they're all fighting this battle and then so why is everyone fighting this battle because you do not know what you actually want right that's the most simplistic bottom line way that i can frame this overall so uh i this is like going back to it right zarya agents and this is a real world benchmark testing that i did in this particular instance and then so in this instance i created uh 2500 um like synthetic example data examples this is a 1.8 million parameter version of the model uh and then i trained it for 25 epochs on this and, and on a t4 a one singular t4 gpu for about a half an hour overall so that's the entirety of the training of this model uh, and then i gave it real world tasks right so for like tickets and invoices essentially to like uh, extract data from them uh, and then like uh, take action off of that right so uh, in this instance like the first task is a ticket and they get you know here's the input like the from the from the email address subject question about my account my order number is blah, blah, blah. I was overcharged on my last invoice. Can we look into it? And then this is exactly what was expected. And then here's the exact result. What you'll notice here is that the one area where the model is uh, like uh, having issues with is this first letter of the order number for some reason. Um, and then we go like it's just the order number. And then so we'll go uh, and then we look at here. So the second one is an invoice. Uh, and then for like so input is uh, and context is it's a paid ledger right so like so so the context that it gets is it's a paid ledger um and then this is the invoice and then the invoice number uh and then for whatever reason this is saying that it was expecting pending but it i mean it's flat out tells it it's a paid ledger right like everything about this this model gave the correct answer here to me <laughs> like i think like this model actually gave a more correct answer than what you want from the expected output here so i think the model fantastic job there model <laughs> uh and then uh here's a ticket so uh from sarah dot dot k at work dot net subject urgent issue with order number b blah 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 i was overcharged my last invoice when i look into it and then uh, so we can see here model generates everything correctly except for uh, this right here right and then so if we're going back to this here uh, so average completion this this test is what we're testing over here right so the very best model on the market that you're paying six cents for for every single completion that is all over the news is able to do what I just showed you 60% of the time. And then uh, here it is, we're looking at this model, which is again, like this model is the all in costs for this model are uh, to to build and train this model are, we'll call it 50 cents. <laughs> like, so anytime that you want to run this model, you already invested your 50 cents. You paid your 50 cents up front every single time that you want to run this model it's six cents every single time right uh 50 cents one time six cents every time so do you start to see the difference there let's 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 boil this down further right so specialists versus generalists a tale of two models think of it like this zarya is a purpose-built factory robot. It was designed to do a few specific tasks with maximum efficiency. And LLM trained from scratch is a human with a PhD. To get there, they had to learn everything from basic grammar to calculus to world history, just to then specialize in your business task. So you hired the robot to do its job in, in 30 minutes for pocket change. Training the PhD from birth would take decades and cost millions. And then so here's kind of just like a, a flat out head to head comparison between these things, right? Just to give you ideas, like literally of the magnitudinal differences between these things. So this Zarya agent model that we're looking at here was trained on 2,500 fully synthetic records, right? Just like I made up, I hoofed them out. Uh, I created like 10 records and then I just had the model create 2,500 20, records flat like out of the blue when we run that training sequence off of base off of the 10. <laughs> and so very simple logic, right? And it's just like scrambling and like there could be a whole bunch of issues with, with that overall, right? Like not the best training set overall. Uh, and then your LLM from scratch is trained from trillions of tokens, words, web text, books, code, uh, 
fine like uh fine tuning records etc and then so <laughs> then it's literally a magnitude of difference into the billions right like as to uh what you're talking about as far as the, the data and then so we get into the hardware i train this on one singular nvidia t4 gpu in order to train an llm model from scratch it would be thousands of nvidia a100 or a1 h100 gpus which are significantly better than these right thousands of gpus so again you're talking about a magnitudinal difference of about like 1000 to 4000 magnitudes training i train this in 30 minutes <laughs> in order for uh to train your typical lm model from scratch this is including your pre-training hours plus your fine tuning three to six months so magnitudinal difference 10,000 times estimated cost i mean we'll call it like 50 cents right like the, the highest cost possible that we could give this uh whereas to train your lm model to do this same task is in the range of 500,000 to 2 million dollars uh and then so you're looking at a magnitudinal difference of literally a million times right uh and then so resulting skill set this is where the model starts to win uh expert at it's mine is an expert at three tasks can only process invoices tickets and api calls the LM model can do everything, can do the three tasks, plus write poetry, summarize little docs, code in Python, etc. But it's going to do these the completion of these tasks lower and at a, a worse percentage than mine, oh, right? And then so uh, that's within that. Mine's not going to write the poetry for you, but it's going to do this better, like what you want it to do better. So uh, agility and iteration, this is where mine comes back up ahead, right? Extremely high. It can be retrained from scratch in 30 minutes to adapt to a new task format. Uh, whereas with your LLM, it's retraining from scratch is prohibitively expensive and you can only afford to fine and tune it. So bottom line within this and just uh, highlighting this overall, like what, like, again, you don't understand what you actually want versus what you think that you want. Right. Um, and then so any company in existence, if you want uh, this to be your agent pipeline, what you would get within this is and why you would want to go within this is a you're going to get better performance. Right. That's the bottom line. And like, like, let's talk about performance above anything else. Uh, and that's what matters at the end of the day. Like if you want the bleeding edge, actual cutting edge performance, like I want this to be to perform better than anything else. This is actually going to perform better than anything else on that side, very specifically because of the math problems that are associated with this. Numbers don't lie here, right? This is breaking it down in this way. If you want to see this exact equation broken down in a multitude of ways, just watch it like uh, any of my other videos on this particular subject overall, right? I, div I dive into this in every single way possible. This is just a new way to visualize this like split brain problem for you overall, right? But secondarily is the cost. And then, and then so to me, again, like, well, like, uh, we'll call it 50 cents. It could be more like five cents. It's uh, like, I mean, that's kind of like the, the more realistic number, uh, as opposed to seven cents every single task, like every single generation, uh, that needs to, to occur there. <laughs> and, and then so, uh, within like actually like having it perform one real world task, it's your mod, like you're already more expensive, uh, overall on that side than on this side. Right. And then that's like, uh, if you want to uh, fix the model, you want it to like it's it's like, OK, we want to drive this number up and actually like do things and, and iterate and actually go through the process of that. You can do this on that on this side where you can't on that side. Right. And then it's just uh, I can't highlight the differences of this enough. Like this is a one million parameter model, essentially to call two two million parameter model. Uh, doing these things and performing these tasks and essentially like beating out and smoking uh, an LM model when it comes to agentic tasks, right? And this is like these age specialized agentic tasks is where uh, the business world wants to go within this. And that's why I'm focusing uh, within this like uh, all on specialized agentic tasks and what we're looking at within that with regards towards this, right? And then so if you want and AI model that is skilled at specialized tasks, uh, 
you can pay 50 cents one time or six cents for every single execution, which means again, for every real world action, it's gonna cost you like a dollar plus. Uh, and you're gonna have less performing, it's gonna be less performant overall. Like I, I, I can't, I don't, I mean, currently right now like so the breakdown of it is is that the like uh big tech all of the lm providers like they want you to be in this world right this is the world that uh benefits them because they're levi strauss uh they're james sutter etc right because they're the only ones with access to this overall like i don't think that people understand overall how big these models are and then how big it is to train these models that's the the uh, the impediment isn't the knowledge within these things. It's the, the actual, like having the GPU overall, right? Like uh, look at like Meta, right? And what Meta is talking about, like Meta isn't talking about building Manhattan's Manhattan size, like GP, GPTs. They're talking about building Manhattan size GPUs, right? Uh, and then it's not like the, the GPT isn't what is important in the equation. It's the GPU that is most important in the equation because these GPTs are so ungodly costly when it comes to the GPU. NVIDIA is Levi Strauss in this equation, right? And then so none, absolutely none of these players have any incentive to upset the status quo, right? They have a clear monopoly built up within this. They can cut out their competitors because it's either you have the money to compete or you don't. Uh, and then that becomes a game of attrition, right? And then overall, so there's a lot of things that and a lot of levers that they can control within this world. And then so it's disincentivized to tell you and tend to to try to introduce you to this world. And, and so uh, this is the world that you want. This is the world that you don't know that you want. Um, this is the the far better world overall. Like it's it's a drop in the bucket, a one percent. Like the, the the cost of this world is one percent compared to this world to just explore it. So like I mean, from an enterprise business perspective, like there's no reason on the planet why well, I see why any company would wouldn't have any incentive to explore on um, this side uh, and then with these things, right? And then I'm also like, I'm, the last thing I'll state within this is I'm not trying to state overall that this Zarya, that the Zarya architecture here is the end all be all uh, within these things. What I am stating is that Z this Zarya architecture is 100% open source. I've proven to you over and over again now that it beats LM models on every single test that would be imaginable. Uh, and this is what you actually want. It could run on your cell phone. It could run on a floppy disk. You are cutting out Levi Strauss from the equation, you become Levi Strauss yourself. There's, I mean, I, I can't state the benefits of this to you overall enough, right? And then so uh, here we are. Uh, hopefully <laughs> this has been enough of an explanation here for you. I think I've done like a, so to me, I, I've kind of satisf satisfied myself uh, overall at this point now for the time being with regards towards the, the Zarya models for a while. And then so I'll probably um, stop talking about them for a while after this. But so this is the, the last video on it and just like the one geared specifically towards uh, very specifically businesses out there, right? Like there's no reason why you shouldn't be using this uh, and exploring it. It's free for you, right? Every, like here's all the code. I give you everything that you want within this. I'm not trying to sell you anything within this, right? Like just, I mean, utilize it. I'm trying to tell, like avoid uh, giving these guys money, like, and, and, and like, ha like turning these guys into like an economic powerhouse for no reason. Like that's what my goal is within this. Uh, because there's no reason for it. Um, and then so uh, overall, uh, here I'll leave a link to both uh, this collab notebook here, and then I'll leave a link to this agent leader board here if you want to check that out. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.